Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have JD. JD is from Kentucky in the USA. So let's see what JD has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hello. There we go. I hear you now. Hello. How are you, JD? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much. Should I call you James or JD? JD is fine. Okay, JD. Thanks so much for taking your time again for the interview. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Oh, no problem. I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> very good. JD, before we start the game, just tell me um, where are you from? I'm from Stearns, Kentucky. Oh, tell me a little bit about your city, your town. Uh, well, there's not a whole lot. It used to be a coal mining town, but okay. now it's just full of Republicans. <laughs> Is so that a good thing? Is that a good thing? <laughs> I, I mean, if you're a Republican, yeah. <laughs> I love the answer. <laughs> And uh, what do you do for living? Uh, I dabble. I do a little bit of photography. Um, I take care of some stuff around my house. That's about it. I see. Part right. Part uh, husband, part photographer, part um, content creator, I guess. Okay. And um, so before um, we start our journey, I was I was um, checking your profile on Facebook, and um, it says there that you are a gamer. A photographer, mm -hmm. a, ner a, a, ner a nerd, and in the end you said, shake, uh, shake well and serve. Yes. Tell, tell me a little bit about this little phrase. Oh, the shake well and serve. I'm a huge fan of a dirty martini. The dirtier, the better. And I like them shaken and not stirred. Oh, so it's all connected with the martini then. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was something like, oh, I, I, that's why I'd like to ask. I was like, okay, I'm not sure what he meant here. What's the message behind? So it's all about the martini. Yeah. And then I think on Instagram it says I have a hard shell and a soft nougat -y center, but caution, I'm a bit nutty. <laughs> Very interesting. I love it. Interesting, James. Right, DJ, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views? Okay. Absolutely. So welcome to William and the Magic Box. I'm a lovely box full of random fun questions, okay? I'm just going to play a song now just for us to move a little bit before the first question, okay? Okay. Let's do it. Oh my God, who is that? <laughs> Introduce to me, who is that? Uh, this is one of the dogs, this is River. And then, my little munchkin. Oh, this is oh that's sweet. <laughs> it's a girl, it's a boy? Uh, they're both girls. Oh, sweet, very sweet. <laughs> They'll probably right. get involved a few times. Great, great, please, please let, let them to get involved. I love it. I love when my, my guests they had some uh, pets on the show. It's just beautiful. Right, yeah. so just just to get the first before I get the first question, uh, JD, through the game, there is a question that you don't have an answer for, you don't want to answer, it always can be changed, okay? Okay. First question for you is what did you think was the most challenging part of being a kid? Oh gosh. Not really like burying the lead there, are you? Um, well, I grew up with a uh, blood disorder. So like just basic average everyday kid stuff was relatively challenging for me because uh, I was prone to spontaneously internal bleeding with uh, hemophilia A. So uh, I would just spend a lot of time just reading and a lot of my friends just thought I didn't want to play with them but it was just, I didn't really know what they were playing because I didn't really have a reference point. <laughs> so tell me a little bit, you have the disorder that bleeding, you mean? Yeah, like uh, my blood doesn't clot, 
and I can start bleeding inside. So if I get a bruise, it can either take much, much longer to go away or it just doesn't go away and get and just spread and get worse. Oh, wow. So you always had that. Yeah, I was uh, diagnosed at three weeks. Oh, wow. And uh, do you have symptoms? Yeah, it, it's hereditary. So they were just looking out for it. I see. And do you have siblings as well? Uh, yeah, I have uh, two sisters. They're both older than me. You are the, the big boy, yeah? I'm, I'm the baby. Yeah, I'm the baby. <laughs> Very good. Next question for you. Let's do it. Next question for you is, which question you'd like to be asked? Which question would I like to be asked? Yes. Oh gosh, uh, I don't know. Questions about, oh, like just random questions that will just give you like a brief insight into a person. Those are the kind of questions I really like to be asked. Like, uh, like on the spot, I'll just randomly ask someone like, quick, what animal would you be? Go. You have five seconds. And Tell me normally... which one that would be? Which one that would be? Oh, I'd definitely be a badger. Why? Because they will mess you up. <laughs> 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 like, they just don't want to be bothered. Like, they just want to find food in the forest. They want to dig their hole and they want to be left alone. That's it. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Very easy, easy, easy. <laughs> Next question. Let's do it. Before the next question, tell me how did the photography came into your life? When you start your career? Uh, probably when I bought my first DSLR camera in like early 20s. It was the first thing I had really bought for myself after getting like a decently paid job. So I just kind of fell into it. And I'm really uh, into figuring things out through trial and error. That's a lot of what getting started in photography is, is just finding what everything means and uh, just the different settings in your camera for just like little tweaks that really just make a photo really stand out. I see. And what do you like to photograph the most? There is kind of specific area or kind of overall? Uh, just overall, I'm still like I'm still like in a self teaching phase, I mm -hmm. guess. So I do I mainly do a lot of my dogs, a lot of uh, my backyard and landscapes. Good thing about living in the woods in the middle of nowhere, you have a lot of scenery to work with. Wow. Um, and a lot of selfies and probably photos of my nieces. That's about it. Oh, sweet. How many nieces do you have? Uh, I have two. They're twins. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah, they just turned 13 this year, and I'm dying. Because <laughs> they're, start <laughs> they're starting to get in that age where they're going to start dating. Mm. And I'm not okay with it at all, William. I'm not okay, but wow. I have to be. <laughs> <laughs> Are they aware of it, that you're not okay about it? Uh, just the fact that little boys are going to be coming around and they're 13 and I, mm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an overly protective gungle. I will follow them from bush to tree with a baseball bat or something and just waiting for someone to just do something untoward towards them that I don't like. Oh my God. You know what? You just made me remember now. I have a niece as well and she's 14 years old and actually- so you know. Yes, literally. I, the other day I called her, it was her birthday in the end of October, she just turned 13, uh, 14. And, um, and uh, uh, she was with her dad, and her dad was saying on the car, you know what, she just start talking about boyfriends, and I'm not happy with that. <gasps> and I was looking at him, I was like, oh my god, I never thought about that. I, I, I never kind of started wondering yet about this situation, you know? Yeah, like I, I, I don't want to have that conversation with them. I'm just there to spoil them rotten <laughs> and then give them back to their parents. <laughs> are they, they identical twins or are they different? Uh, they're fraternal twins. So uh, 
Leah has like bright red hair like this, but she has bright baby blue eyes. And then Abby is taller, leaner, and long, dark features. So it's they're very, very different, but very, very beautiful in their own way. How about personality always? They're kind of different as well? Uh... Leah's Leah's very very loud and outspoken. She will tell you when you've done something wrong and how you did it wrong and what you wow. need to do to make it right. Wow. Uh, Abby is like me. She's very mild and calm, and she'll just like kind of go along with anything. But she'll also like a lot of the times like internalize it and take it in. And then Leah will have to actually step in and be like, "No, Abby, you're not thinking about it right. You need to think about it this way." So it's like wow. she's so it's like Leah's Abby Sykes is like Abby psychologist as well as like big sister, but Abby's the older one. I see. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> they'll be very happy to watch this interview. <laughs> oh yeah, they'll be watching for it. <laughs> Next question for you is what is the best first date have you ever been on? The best first date I've ever been on. Oh, um this one guy took me to coffee and then surprised me with the zoo trip oh that's romantic that's sweet <laughs> and, and i prefer animals as opposed to people so i loved it oh very good and very good we were, we were together for like a uh, two years after that wow and after he stopped taking you to the zoo so things went the wrong way <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like you better get, better keep some animals in my life, or it's not going to happen. That, those are my rules. I need animals, I need food, and I need laughter. Wow. And otherwise, I, otherwise, like you can't really. Uh, I, I see you. Hello. <laughs> She wants to answer that question as well. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Let's do it. <laughs> JD, next question for you is, um, which bad habits you wish you could stop? Oh gosh, uh, the one I'm going to start uh, getting rid of now, biting my nails. Uh. I have horrible anxiety and it's just like, I'll just like start biting my nails down the nub. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to start painting my nails to get rid of, to stop doing it. Because <laughs> maybe it'll deter me if I'm like eating nail polish to not bite my nails. <laughs> and when, when, when it happened, when you feel anxious or when you feel nervous, when the situation happens and bite your nails? Oh, and like, I'll just, like, I think it's like gone on so long ever since I was uh, 15. Like, it's just, it's just kept going. And I'll just like absentmindedly like find myself just like, Let, let me see your nails. Show me. Let me see your nails. How it looks like. Oh. Let me see. There's like nothing there. Okay. They're, they're okay. <laughs> they're, they're, they're teeny. You're being generous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never had. Sometimes I find myself as well kind of biting, but it's not like I wouldn't say it's a bad habit because it, it doesn't happen very often. It happened like mm -hmm. just because you said now I felt like a little bit, but it does not something that when I'm nervous, not the reaction or anything when I um, bite my nails. Never, never been. Oh, yeah. I, I, like, I'm just going to start painting my nails to make it soft. <laughs> Next question. Let's do it. <laughs> Before the next question, DD, tell me a little bit about your beautiful beard and your mustache as well. Tell me a little bit about it. How long have you uh, been for? I just randomly started doing it because I was bored. Uh, a lot of this was like through COVID. Uh, oh, really? Because I'm not going, I'm not leaving the house. <laughs> so I'm just going to let it grow out. You know, I got better things to do inside than go out and shave my beard, like watching Henry Cavill on Netflix. That's all I got to do. <laughs> and the mustache so, as well. Yeah, so I just like stayed in and just like practiced like braiding my beard. And then my friend decided like, oh, hey, let's do that for uh, my wedding. By the way, you're going to be in my wedding. So braid your beard. So now I'm oh, stuck wow. with it. Uh, 
the handlebar I just randomly uh, started doing as well, but I, I've always really loved a handlebar mustache. And people will stop me at the grocery store. They're like, I just really love it. What do you do? I'm like, I'm just lazy and curl it around my fingers and wax. That's about it. Like, I'm just, <laughs> and they're like, do you do that for anything? Are you a larfer? I'm like, no, I, I just like my beard. Thank you. <laughs> but it's very beautiful. Like, actually, when I, when I saw your picture, I was like, oh my God, that's beautiful. It looks very kind of tidy, you know, like professional. And I started like, wow, that's beautiful. Good one. And the color is, is a natural color as well? Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Like my uh, hair is like brown, auburn, and then like my beard is bright red. And then like hair on my chest is brown, but I'm like a calico cat. Wow. Good. It suits you for sure. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> right. So the next question for you is, um, what is the most beautiful thing somebody has ever done for you? The most beautiful thing someone's ever done for me? Yeah. My uh, now partner uh, picked me up from like my friend's house in Cincinnati, drove like four hours to pick me up, uh, gets me in the car and is like, oh, hey, we're going to uh, go on a day trip. So I'm going to have you for a couple of days. Are you OK with that? Like we've been together like probably two months at this point. I'm like, uh, well, you're not going to like take me out into the woods and murder me, are you? Like, well, I mean, not at first. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's not going to happen at first, I guess I'll see what my final moments are. And uh, he takes me down to, uh, we completely go down to Tennessee and just go out to a bar, have a really nice steak dinner. And then he found out that I had never seen uh, the Parthenon in Nashville. Uh, so, and we had a discussion about, uh, uh, Greek myths, like when we first got together and he was surprised that I hadn't seen it. So he just ran them. So he just surprised me with it the next morning, just getting me in the car and making another four or five hour drive to Nashville. So I could go stand underneath the statue of Athena. Wow. That's beautiful. My God. <laughs> That's beautiful! Yeah. Wow, wow, wow! I'm just here, like just look, at, like just listen to your, to your, to your story, and I just picture myself the kind of the same trip as well. Someone special. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? I think those gestures, those like very simple gestures, that's what touches us the most. You know what I mean? When somebody yeah. take their time, take their time for us. You know what I mean? Like they, he, as you said, he he took this little details about your wishes, what you want to see, and he organized mm -hmm. that for you. I think that's what makes things romantic and beautiful as well. This yeah, that's like what, yeah, like you said, the little small intimacy yeah. is how you really know when someone loves you and when you love someone. Absolutely. It's not, like, it's not all the grand gestures, it's the little teeny tiny things that you just totally. like. Waking them up with coffee in the morning because you know, because you know that mornings suck for them. <laughs> are you not a, a morning person oh no not at all <laughs> <laughs> not at all i get woken up with coffee a lot even in the middle of the afternoon <laughs> interesting next question <laughs> right next question for you is what was your favorite part about school uh Oh man, my favorite part about school. Uh, in high school, there was a forensics class that I took. So we got to watch a lot of CSI, but also we got to uh, make fake crime scenes and then solve said crime scene using oh, forensic wow. uh, that, that That was really cool. That was probably like my one and only favorite class of all four years I was there. Let's see. Interesting. Oh, wow. And how old were you at the time when you were doing those? Um... Uh, I was 14, 15. It was just like a side class that they were doing, uh, just like a one off. And I got and I got into it. And I'd always like had a weird fantasy with serial killers anyway. So we were going through like serial killer case files that I had read about for fun. And I was just like all in. And the teacher loved me because we would just go back and forth with it. And who was your favorite teacher? 
Uh, probably that one, uh, Miss Cummins, in uh, at South Laurel High School at the time. She was super, super cool. Very good, very good. Next question, ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Right, next question for you is, talking about early bird being morning, what's your morning ritual, if you have any, besides drinking coffee? <laughs> well, besides drinking coffee, not a whole lot. Uh, no, uh, probably like waking up, take a shower, taking the dogs out. Uh, and then probably just sitting around with Greg outside watching the dogs play while we try and not <laughs> murder each other because now I've had, because now I've accepted coffee. Thanks, William. Because <laughs> without <laughs> coffee, it's not fun. This does not do well without coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, I imagine doing an interview with you early morning without coffee. Oh my God, that would be like, the magic box would be like shaking like this, I'll be like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would look a whole lot like this. <laughs> your beard like, gonna huh? be like, your beard gonna be like this, your beard like, oh, I play around. <laughs> It's gonna be Helter Skelter. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Next one. Let's do it. Right, JT, before the next question, did you always have the support of your family being gay? Do what? Did you always have the support of your family being gay or not? Um, yeah, actually, I did. Uh, I came out around 15 to my sister Emily thinking, uh, saying that I was bi, because that's what I was thinking at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, she told me that I needed to tell mom, Ooh. and I did. And uh, I just walked in. I was crying, snot bubbles. Oh, walking into the kitchen, and I'm just like, mom, I don't think I'm straight. And she's like, well, oh, that's okay, honey. What do you want for dinner? And I was like, I, I just want tacos. She's like, What? not. She's like, not burritos. <laughs> so yeah, I had support. I, they they were making jokes from day one. Oh, that's sweet! My God, such a such a lucky parents. You know what I mean? To have some support parents, and uh, as you said, making fun of something that people are so scared about. I think all of us we go through this scary time and thinking yeah. about my, how I'm gonna come out, and suddenly you have this little surprise as well. It's amazing how she took, I'll, I'll tell you something now as well. When I came out to my mom, it's funny because I um, I sent her a message on WhatsApp. Uh, I was already living in England um, and I said, I, I'm from Brazil, I'm originally from Brazil. And uh, I, I sent her a message. What, I just felt like, oh, you know what? I'm going to tell her now. And I sent a message on WhatsApp and I said, mom, are you around? And she was like, I was like, oh my God. I started to get like sweaty hands and she said, yes, what's happening? I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get it to now? And, she, and I said to her, look, so I started sending her message like on what's like going around. Yeah, I was like, oh, you know, when you're born, you don't choose to be a girl or a boy. This kind of conversation, but you never get to the point. And I was <laughs> explaining, explaining, she was like, yes, of course, I know all of that. So what's happening? What's, what's going on? And I said to her, and I put the hot potato in her hands. So I was like, okay, do you know what I'm talking about or not? Do you know her answer was? Her, her answer was, I was so surprised. She was like, it's about your sexuality or I'm wrong? <laughs> so when she said that, I just literally picked up the phone and I called her and she was laughing. She was literally laughing like over the phone. I said, my God, you're going around, around, around. <laughs> It never gets to the point that I always knew it. So it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when you were, were first- Mamas always know, don't they? They do, and they do, they do the try better than ourselves as well, I believe. Sometimes they know mm -hmm. us better than ourselves, you know? Yeah. But as you came out so early, so young, 15 years old, um, when you look back, what was the, the, the reason why you just felt like, okay, I'm going to tell today it was something that inspires you, or you just felt like genuinely coming out? What was the situation you could walk me through the day? Well, before I had even like really come out or was e even really having that conversation with myself, uh, people were having it at school about me anyway. Uh, so uh, I didn't really have the luxury of really coming out to anyone at high school because I was already outed at high school, but that's, but that's like later on. 
Uh, so telling my parents and my sisters, uh, it just felt like this huge weight and I was really like uh, short tempered, which I mean, I'm a ginger, I'm short tempered anyway. But uh, I was even more short tempered and it was just this weight that I knew I was different. I just couldn't, I just didn't really have the language really to really say it because I wasn't really um, exposed to any sorts of alternate sexualities or religions or anything like that because it was very like by the book. I see. Uh, not through, not that like my parents were strict or anything. It was just that that's just all the knowledge I have, really. And I didn't really have any access to really go looking for any more answers until the internet came up, until the internet came into my house. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> that was a fun conversation with mom. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, coming out was. I'm, I don't really think I was really planning on really doing it. It was just something spur of the moment that I just couldn't really hold on to anymore that I needed to let go of so I could find these answers and uh, figure really figure myself out. And uh, I told like a small group of friends in school that this was what I was dealing with. And then a couple of, that was also that I found out that your friends are not always the best person to, to confide in. Yes. Because they made a fake profile and got me talking and wow. uh, got photos sent back and forth and then printed off my conversations and was reading them in class and making fun of me the entire time. Wow. And another friend came to me at lunch and was like, hey, I have biology with them and they were doing this, 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 and this and gave me word for word some of the conversation that I was having with the person that I believed I was having with last night or the night before. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, coming out to peers didn't really happen except for like that small group and then it just kind of exploded. Uh, coming out to my family was just something that I just couldn't not do anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's some teen at the time, there's some teenager or people that can be really like hard or tough to, you know, to use our genuine feelings or genuine yeah. transparency to, you know, me against us. I think that um, a lot of people they go through that and it's really sad, isn't it? It's how people can mm. use that. Imagine, imagine if they're just a teen, imagine again an adult. They could do even more horrible things. You know what I mean? There's just like a little thing that they can, you know, what I mean? play around with emotions or other people's emotions and things. Yeah, it's very dangerous. But anyway, I think everything counts at the end of the day when you go through those situations. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, yeah. lucky you that you have, a, you know, what I mean, a very supportive family and funny and, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? Because some people can go in a very wrong direction. You know what I mean? Parents can be really tough as well regarding that. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing. Thanks so much. Oh, no problem. Next question for you is, if you could, if somebody come up to you and say, okay, GD, you need to remove forever from your phone, social media, all of them in one pack, or YouTube, which one would you choose and why? Forever. Oh, Instagram. Bye, Insta. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I, I need I need YouTube for like a lot of stuff. Like I watch it for. Uh, I'm a sucker for watching reaction videos. So like, if it's something like I've already like Game of Thrones, I love watching people that haven't seen it before, watching it and reacting from it. It's my favorite thing in the right. world is just watch people reacting to things. Uh, I also watch a lot of, uh, Twitch streamers on YouTube, mm -hmm. and, uh, I watch you. Oh! I mean, recently, oh. but, uh, yeah, I started watching you. Oh, sweet, sweet. I was about to say, how about the magic box? You already said before I said. <laughs> well, normally when I type in the magic box, I get a lot of Doctor Who Google search results, so... Oh, <laughs> But, good. Yeah, I do good. Watch you. It just made my day now. It just made my day. Literally. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Next question. Let's do it. Right. Next question for you is 
What your parents did or still do that comforts you the most? Uh, what did my parents do that comforts me the most? Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, when I was little and I was in the hospital a lot, my mom would do this thing when I was really fussy at night because I couldn't really sleep well with IVs. She would just like rub my nose. Oh. And just sit there and talk to me. Sometimes she'd read me a book. She uh, she'd read me uh, Harry Potter or she'd read me Lord of the Rings, and be just rub my nose until I fell asleep. Oh, that's so sweet, JG. Amazing, amazing, amazing. How cute you remember that. That's yeah, sweet. I, yeah. I remember uh, being like a toddler, uh, learning to crawl. And going for this, oh gosh, it was like this vibrating ball thing that I really, really wanted. And it was under the table. I remember crawling for it and just holding it in my arms and my legs and just letting it shake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very sweet, very sweet. Right, I have three questions left for you, okay? Let's okay. do it. Before the next question, tell me, um, What's the best part of being a photographer and what's the most challenging part? Oh gosh, the most satisfying part was uh, probably getting that shot that you've been trying to get but just the lighting's not right or the stupid leaf won't stay put or <laughs> this bug just flew into the shot or oh no, you're blinking, we need to stop. Uh, just finally getting the perfect shot that you visualize in your head and, ha and holding it in your hands is probably the most satisfying thing. Uh, the most difficult thing, I think, is being your own worst art critic and mm. looking at a shot and just ev like eviscerating it and just not keeping it because you don't think it's great or you don't think it's perfect and then like showing it to someone and then them wanting to buy it because they really enjoy it and they really like that this thing that you see as a flaw is actually the best part of the piece i see so it's uh the most so yeah the most difficult thing is just shutting up and letting go and just like letting sh stuff happen i see and not hurting yourself more than you're helping yourself Do you believe that the best shots are the ones that you're not kind of expecting or not pulled, you're not prepared? You know what I mean? Some this beautiful shot that you see around. Do you believe that or not? Do you believe that it's just a coincidence or just can happen naturally? But do you think it's the, you, you know what I mean? My point. I, I think it's a it, it's a perfect balance of both making it happen and things just falling into place that way. Like, if you want a great shot of the sunset with a foggy day on a lake, you have to know what time the sunset is, so you have to look that up. You have to uh, know when the best fog time is, so that's something you have to look up on the weather. So it's the perfect blend of just letting things fall into place and just planning out to the best you can of what it is you're going for. I see. Okay. Next question for you is, who makes you laugh the most? Oh gosh, probably myself, because I have some <laughs> really bad ones. Um, honestly, uh, Greg and I probably take, Greg, my husband, my, uh, husband and I probably take turns being the funny one. Uh, I, we have this rule that once a day, you have to have a proper belly laugh. And one of us has to give it to you. Wow. So we normally try and do a lot of laughing. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been together for? Uh, six years. Wow. Wow. No yeah, one. It's like two and gay years. And. <laughs> <laughs> And how did you guys meet up, if you can share? We met on Grindr. Oh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> we met on Grindr. Uh, he had just moved from Florida uh, to take care of his mom because she uh, needed some help. And I had moved back from Cincinnati. Uh, and we met on Grindr and he picked me up in the middle of the night 
at a four-way intersection in the middle of the road and we went back to a hotel room like intending to like just have a one night oh. stand and then just like bye see you later and we stayed let's see he picked me up at midnight and he dropped me off back at my sister's house around 6 30 7 o'clock in the morning we had spent the entire night uh well doing the obvious but also uh taking turns talking about our favorite historical figure our oh. favorite our favorite uh, science fiction authors uh scientific theories and uh going back and forth on pop culture so we spent like the entire night talking and the obvious and here we are like wow. six almost seven years later and who messaged you the first on grinder oh gosh i have a thing for daddies it was probably me <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, look at him, that you're the one who gave the first shots. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, uh, he, he, didn't, he didn't wait, and he didn't wait a while to message me back. So I think it was like back and forth. Spontaneous, it was spontaneous, like bulls, literally. Oh yeah. <laughs> Two questions left, let's do it. Right, JD from Kentucky. Next question for you is, what is a significant event that has changed you? A significant event that has changed me. Uh, probably uh, probably uh, seeing my nieces being born. I think oh. that one was it. Well, the second one, yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it, was, it, so was, it was it was my first time in a maternity ward. First of all, wow. Uh, second of all, I uh, per, I lived with my sister when she was like carrying them, and then like when she was uh, raising them the first couple of years. So I was just like in it for the long haul, uh, and I didn't realize how much testing was done on the baby when it, when they come out. So they like drew some blood on one of the babies to like test their blood sugar and I just start banging on the maternity door window like excuse me excuse me is that medicine is that necessary <laughs> nurses had to come out and console me and just be like yeah that's necessary so that's when that that moment probably made me start becoming more of a badger <laughs> Wow. Protecting their dad because, yeah, I was I saw blood on my niece's foot and I was not happy. Wow. <laughs> Very overprotective. Wow. <laughs> this is the beginning. I'm sure they're very, I'm sure they're very um, well protected. I'm sure they're very proud as well to have an uh, uncle. Very, you know what I mean? Protect. Oh, yeah, we play PlayStation together all the time. Oh, sweet. Last question. Ready? Yeah. Let's do it. JD, before the last question, um, since the world went upside down last year, since the COVID situation uh, around the world, what's the most positive thing you took out of this challenge journey so far? Oh gosh, the most, po the most po positive, positive thing uh, that's got me through COVID. Uh, one, it's not all about you to drink lots of water <laughs> and three uh if you have to try again and again to get people to get your friends to message you back or talk to you they weren't your friends to begin with <laughs> very good very good <laughs> <laughs> that those are the three things that got me through COVID. I don't know what else worked for other people, but oh, and uh, t watched Ted Lasso on it on Apple TV Plus. That was great. <laughs> right, last question now is a tough question. Let's say, let's imagine, imagine that your plane was going down, yeah, and you okay. could call just one person to say goodbye. Who that would be and why? Well, if I'm on a plane and the plane is going down, I'm assuming Greg is with me, so I no. don't have to call him. 
Uh, okay, I, okay. I'll, I'll let I'll let him to be in the brain as well. I'll let I'll let you, you. You were very clever with this part. You were very clever. Oh, I, oh, I'm loving this question. So I'm going to go through it as logically as possible and apply it to my situation. <laughs> so Greg would definitely be, be with me on the okay. plane. Okay. Oh my God. For calling. him. For he him. knows. He's dead too. He's got to make his own calls. This is about me here. <laughs> um, I would probably call my dad. Hmm. Tell me why. Uh, well, my dad and I have just recently been starting to really pick, uh, really pick up the pieces of our, of our relationship, and mm. I think he would. I think. Uh, I don't know. I just. I would want my dad to be the first and only call I'd make if I was going to die, because wow. he would make sure that everyone else knew, but he also wouldn't let it be all about that at the same time. Well. Wow. Beautiful answer, beautiful, beautiful. JD, it's not the end yet, okay? Let's play now the word association game, okay? I'm going to give you some words. It'll just tell me one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking, right? Okay. Life. Death. Love. Lust. Money. Greed. Family. Lost. Sex. Oh, yes. <laughs> Politics. Confusing, but necessary. Good. Religion. Not as uh, not as necessary as politics. Fear. Pointless. Friendship. Necessary. Regret. Me. <laughs> Desire. Normal. Success. Lucky. Wish. Dream. Is a wish Happy. your heart makes. <laughs> Happiness. Perfection. One word for Kentucky. Stay out of Kentucky. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> There's nothing here but chicken and Mitch McConnell. What all? What more do you need? <laughs> <laughs> One word for USA. One word for the USA. I got three. Work in progress. I like that. I like that. Last one now. One word for photographer. Ooh, brilliant. Very good. Let's pretend now I'm going to meet your lovely husband for a coffee. And I'm going to ask him, what is the most beautiful thing about JD? And what's something that he still needs to improve on, to work on? What do you think he'll tell me? Uh, the thing he'll tell you that is the most beautiful, he thinks, are my eyes. He calls them his aunt, he calls them the Amber Room. I don't really get it, but I've also never seen the Amber Room. Uh, <laughs> he would probably say the thing I probably need to work the most on is my self-deprecation that borderlines on just depressing because mm -hmm. I, I like i'm my own worst critic but i'm all i'm also my own biggest bully so like if something goes wrong i'm just like oh gosh i'm trash and he hates it he hates when i say i'm such a crack I'm, I'm if i even like try and call myself a raccoon that i'm a trash panda he doesn't like it because it's referencing me and trash. So I think that's the thing that he would probably think I need the most help with. If I would ask the same question to your lovely dad, would you say the same? Uh, the thing that he probably loves the most about me is our matching sense of humor and the fact that I can always make a joke even about the shittiest thing possible. Wow. Um, the thing that I think he would think that I need to work on is call him more. <laughs> the parents always say that. They, never they call always him. say that you need to call more. <laughs> and yeah, I, I need to call my dad more. Call your dad more. <laughs> Good one. And if I would ask your lovely um, niece to define you in a positive word and a negative word, what do you think they would define you? In a positive word, she'd probably say I was nerdy, 
<laughs> and in a neg, I, I don't know if my nieces would be able to say a negative thing about me. Oh. I try, I try and be like the best. Um, I try and be the best uncle ever. So I don't really, I, I only really reprimand them if they need anything like to be reprimanded on. Like if they say something that just is not okay or bullying someone, I'll like, I'll nip it in the bud right there and be like, no, that's unacceptable. They normally call that mean old bub because I'm not I'm not Uncle JD I'm bub so that that I don't think they'd really have a negative thing to really say at least they better not you, or they're not or they better not or their Christmas <laughs> gifts are going out the window. <laughs> Do, I think if you're gonna go like you know you know Uncle that actually I have this I have that I have that. <laughs> They probably have like a compiled list of problems for Bob. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they know how sweet you are. I'm sure. I'm sure they, they know that. I'm sure. Right. Let's play now JD and the Magic Box. And you can ask me a question. But before that, let's play the news one more time. Let's do it. Okay. You can ask me a question now, JD. I can ask you any question. You can raise your mask box. Okay. So, in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel in season three, they talk about how in the showbiz industry, you aren't taken seriously unless you have a very weird ask. Some people, they just want one color M&M. Other people, they want like a flamingo lawn decoration in the corner of their face. You're in your green room waiting to be interviewed by someone. What is your weird ask? Mm, very good question. Wow, wow, I like that. Wow. Um, you put me to the spot now. <laughs> I mean, you've been putting me on the spot this entire interview. With your <laughs> you're paying off now. Yeah, you're paying off. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've been holding on to this one for a while. Yeah. <laughs> And it's very well because you put me in the spot. <laughs> Okay, so I would say, um, let me see. You put me in spot now. I was expecting a question that like that. My God, JD, you are very good. Good one, good one. Okay, okay, I like that. And I just, when I was talking to you now, the first thing that I looked was this. <laughs> the first thing you would want was your magic box. I think that would, the thing that I would, I, would, I would love to leave on my side is just this magic box so people know that's okay, that's, That's what it's really about. That's what it's it's um, his legacy. That's what he needs to be around him. That's what represents him. That's what makes him the person who he is right now at the moment. And since he created that, so I think my magic box. I'll go for that. Oh, I like that. I think I was going to say I just needed a bunch of Twinkies, but I like yours much better. Mine just makes me sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so go for much my much box. I think it's something that uh, this 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 gift came out of this challenge time of 2020 with uh, the COVID situation, and I think I'm so grateful. And uh, I always have this magic box around me to remember who I am, to remember what um, what my my life is about is about to connect with so incredible interesting people like you sharing their memories in life their point of views you know what i mean their beautiful connection with their family their nieces their dads and i think that's what the the magic box is about yeah i love that i'm excited to keep watching more too i've already subscribed and hit the little bell so i get notifications whenever you post a new one Thank you so much. Thanks so much, uh, JD. It was a pleasure. I just hope you enjoyed the experience. I hope you had a good time. Yeah, I had a blast. River so slept the whole time, so I guess she liked it too. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. How old is she? Uh, how old are you again? Seven? No, she's uh, five, six. And the other she's one? Five or six. Uh, Pepper, how old are you? Oh, she's asleep. She's three. <laughs> Oh, the youngest one. <laughs> JD, before you go, I would like to share a positive message, a positive quote, something that inspires you in life. Okay. Uh, something positive that inspires my life. Um, 
African honey badger can take on three lions on its own. Be an African honey badger. Wow, 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 wow. Very good, very good. Thank you so much for the interview. Thanks for being kind and sweet and to take your time for to be part of this beautiful journey with me. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks for having me. I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Be guys to your part and to your lovely niece and have a good day, okay? Thank you so much for the interview, you okay? Too. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye. See you next time.